Alright, so today we'll take a look at how you can save yourself a lot of time by generating realistic fade data for your integration tests. My name is Vasily Olenik, I'm a .NET developer and you're watching the .NET Core Integration Testing Basics series, where we are covering everything you need to know about integration testing in .NET. Now, let me show you the problem that we currently have and, well, it's not really a problem, it's more like a improvement point that we can make. Basically, in our create endpoint habit test, we have this first integration test string that we attribute to a habit, which is okay for now, but when our test suite will get large enough, we'll have to be really ingenious with our names for the habits. Well, all that can be solved by using a simple library called Bogus, which we previously used in some other projects where we needed to generate fake data at a large scale. And basically test IDs or different randomizers were not giving us the results. Test IDs were a hassle to maintain and having random data was pretty much very hard to debug and reason about. Now, how we can start using Bogus is pretty simple. First of all, we will need to install the Nougat package, which we can find on Nougat under Bogus. I'll install it real quick. The next thing that we need is, first of all, I'll comment out this part and we will need a fake data generator. In our case, it will be var habit data generator new faker of type and over here we can specify that I want to generate for myself habit data. It's really similar to having a Fluent Validator, I believe. The API looks similar to it, where you can define rules for the data generation. I've pinned myself into a corner right now with the topic have of habits because I don't really think that Bogus has anything, has a way to generate habit data, but let's test it and see where it can get us. So, so by default, the way we would specify data is something like this. So I want to generate for my name and then I simply say to the faker that I want to generate a name, but I think this one is for the first name and last name. So yeah, we have the first name, full name, job area, descriptor, job type, last name, really a lot of different types of data that we can generate. Uh, basically, we have as well locales, systems, address, commerce, companies, databases, everything related to finance, uh, well, hacker, and yeah, nothing fancy over here. So let's say, for example, if you need some finance data for your project, then you can generate IBAN codes, uh, BICs, Ethereum addresses, wow, something new over here. So there is a lot of types of data that you can generate. I'll link down below a post to where you can find the whole specific list. But for now, let's say that I want to generate the first name and let's say that this will be our rule. Now we need to generate a habit. So for our case, it will be var habit equals new habit data generator dot generate. And it's just as easy as that. So I'll put a breakpoint over here and debug this integration test. And once we have hit our breakpoint over here, we can just take a look at our data. So the auto-generated name is Colin. I'll try to be a little bit more ingenious about how I generate my habit. And as well show you a couple of other tricks over here that we have at our disposal. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a couple of actions, which is gonna be an array of strings. And the actions will be something like annoy, then bug, then disturb someone. Yeah, I am pretty pessimistic right now. Okay, and for our habit, I'm gonna cut this one and generate a simple string. So in our case, it might be something like faker, uh, pick at random, and then you can specify an array over here or an I enumerable. Then we specify an action, so it will randomly pick an action from the ones that we have specified over here. Then I'm gonna need a full name over here. So we're gonna either annoy or bug someone with some repetitive requests. 
Yeah, the usual basics. So if I'm gonna debug this one right now, we can see that there is a generated habit over here. So annoy Kobe Walker with some repetitive requests. Well, great. Uh, but you can see here a problem, the ID is zero. Well, this is a small limitation right now. So we will have to define a rule for our ID. Let's try to have a random integer from zero to 10. And once we debug the solution, the ID itself will be auto-generated with a random number from zero to 10, which is kind of fine, but there is an even easier way out to solve this. And for that, we're gonna need to install one additional NuGet package, which is called autobogus, which is the second in this list. Once it's installed, all I will need to do is over here, replace faker with auto faker from autobogus. And yeah, something crazy happened here. I do need this one. So I'm gonna remove as well the rule for the ID and let's debug and see what happens. So once we hit our breakpoint, we can go over to our habit and see that we have an auto-generated ID and the settings object is also auto-generated even though I don't really need it. So this is really a bird's eye view over how Bogus works and how you can enhance if you want it without Bogus. Those two libraries are really extensive and you can get so much more out of them. So I highly encourage you to give them a store on GitHub and try to see for yourself what else they can do. But from practice, I would say that this setup will suffice you 90% of the time that you need to generate fake data. So this is the end of the video. It was a shorter one since the topic is not that big. Nonetheless, it's a really important topic that I wanted to cover. If you liked this kind of content, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me a lot. Otherwise, I'll leave over here a list of, uh, well, a playlist of videos that you can watch until the next one comes out. Have a nice one.